empowered woman about empowering other women. You don't want to miss this one. So please like us, share us, let your friends know to join right now. Now, we know that being a woman in today's society can be fulfilling. It can also be very challenging at times, you know. Every day, we try to juggle our roles. We try to achieve balance, taking care of everybody else while taking care of ourselves, you know. And today, we have some women, despite the experience of some who may experience hurt from others, we have examples of phenomenal sisters who can work together without drama, right? And lift each other up. No competition, no drama, none of that, right? From a very early age, I realized that there was a call on my life to uplift and empower other women. And, you know, I look at my mother, Bishop Juliet Camblin St. Vincent, my grandmothers, and a lot of their lives were about empowering other women, building them up, you know? And in fact, in 2011, my mom and I co-founded the Arise and Blossom Women's Organization to empower women and transform lives. Now, <laughs> we go back as well on June 3rd, 2015, we had a meeting where our senior pastor at Trumpet Call Ministries International, Apostle Mary Wildish, called a bunch of us together. We had no clue what we were in for. And do you know, while I was sitting there waiting for the meeting to start, I looked upon the, the board that shows how the ministry is organized. And women's ministry jumped out at me as, hmm, that may be something I could get involved in. Lo and behold, that meeting was the birth of the Women of Influence Ministry in Trumpet Call Ministries International. And in keeping with the vision of TCMI, we seek to train, equip, and release fully devoted followers of Christ, right? And we seek to help them to learn to lead and empower others, as well as radically impacting every sphere of society, locally, regionally, and internationally. So our mandate is not just to minister to a group of women in a specific church, but in fact to reach women everywhere, right? Because we have so much in common. Um, one of our primary tasks was to serve women on the fringes, women who may come to church but not be totally involved, to get them ministered and ministered to, right? And also women who may not be comfortable coming to a traditional church setting, but may feel more comfortable initially fellowshipping in a home group setting. So that's where we started. We had some amazing times of fellowship, pre-COVID of course, in, you know, in person, in different person's homes, but now we've taken it on Zoom. So the ministry continues. And we're also involved in evangelistic events, in women's encounter retreats, which again, pre-COVID were in person. And for the first time ever, ladies, we're going to host an online women's encounter. So there's no excuse. You don't need anybody to watch the kids. You can join us on Zoom between Thursday and Sunday this week. So you'll hear more information about that too, right? So I can't wait to discuss all these issues with my empowered sisters. Remember, we'll have the panel discussion. And then we'll give you, our Facebook audience, an opportunity to send us your questions, send us your comments. Let's get real. Let's have a discussion about empowered women, empowering women. So I can't wait to introduce these ladies to you. But before I do so, please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening and we give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we want to thank you for these women, God, who have given their life to serving other women, lifting them up, Lord God. We pray that you bless them in a very special way. Right now, we pray for all women listening and all women around the world, God, that you would meet them at their point of need, that they would get to know you as Lord and Savior of their lives, Lord God, that they would know that in these turbulent times on Christ, the solid rock, they stand, Lord God, because all other ground is sinking sand, that they would know that they were made on purpose for purpose, that they were fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, Lord God. So we thank you again for this day. We give you full control of this evening's proceedings. Have your own way, Lord. We give you all honor. We give you all glory and we give you all praise in the most precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So I'll have these ladies 
um, introduce themselves one at a time. So we'll start with Mrs. Nicola Dixon. You'll tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, and what you do. Good evening, everybody. It's such a joy and a privilege to be with you this afternoon. And I really want to just applaud Dr. Rusha for what she's doing. And of course, give honor to Apostle Mary for having the insight and the vision to birth this at Trumpet Call. And even though we're in lockdown mode, we're not in lockdown because the church is advancing, even across this platform this evening. So I just want to tell you who I am. I am a woman. I, I, I mean, I'm Jamaican by birth. I am married, I have three children. I have juggled career, um, ministry, and all those things. But no, I really, I'm just on fire for God. I do counseling at church. I, um, I, I consider myself just an all-round minister. Wherever the Lord wants me to be, I'm going to be there because I'm on fire for him. And I want to see passion birth in other women passion to know him more and more so that in a nutshell is who i am i know at one point i was working for secular and i said i cannot be building up another man's kingdom anymore it has to be about the kingdom of god has to be about his time now and so that's where the journey has taken me and so it is about his time now Thank you. Thank, thank you for thank inviting you so, me. Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you for being here. And Yvette, can you tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, and what you do? Yvette Cummings. And you can unmute. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Yvette Cummings. I am from Montego Bay. Grew up in the beautiful parish of Westmoreland but um, originally from Montego Bay. I have been in full-time ministry now for a little over three years. And I consider myself having the best job ever. Um, in essence, it touches lives for eternity. You know, it's not just temporal, but for eternity, I oversee you know, ministries in, in Trumpet Call, such as our house churches and the women of influence come under this group. It is our pastor's heart to see communities evangelized and leaders birth in, you know, house churches. Every Wednesday, uh, we have our house churches and um, it has really impact Montego Bay. I'm also over a uh, mission of mercy where every week, guys, every week we feed hundreds of people. We feed families, you know, we feed, especially in COVID, you know, our pastor doesn't want anyone to go without food. You know, our heart is, you know, persons are out of jobs, persons get pay cut. And so every week we, we feed persons where, I um, mean, the next week, we'll be having a back to school fair where thousands, you know, hundreds um, of, of children will be getting backpacks and they'll be getting the essentials to go um, back, to, back to school. And I am just crazy in love with God and I'm just happy to be used, to be used of him. Thank you so much, Yvette. And now we move on to Mrs. Tahoya Becker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tahoya. Um, I am a partner at Trumpet Call Ministries. I've been a partner for more than nine years. I have been in full-time ministry for over four years. I am also um, a part of the Women of Influence and I'm a member of the building team. I love working with women. I find it thrilling. I find it empowering. I feel that that is the purpose that the Lord God Almighty that I serve and love has given me. And it is something that I will never stop doing. It is the call in my life. 
And I hope to be an example to every person whose lives that I will come in contact with. I am a realtor by profession. I am married with two beautiful kids and to a wonderful and supporting husband. And I strive to become more and more like my fellow sisters who have been in full-time ministry for a very long time, such as my friend, Dr. Arusha, Stacy, Yvette, Nikki, Beth, you are, you know, you are role models and I appreciate all of you so, so much. And most of all, my pastor, my apostle, Mary Wildish, I admire her so much. She is such a strong and beautiful person. She is a woman of God and really and truly she pushed me and she pushed all of us in this ministry and she encouraged us, she supports us and we appreciate her. And thank you for having me, Arusha. Thank you so much for being here, Tahoya. And we move on to Stacy. Stacy, we had her already on the program. Stacy and yo. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Are you hearing me? I'm not sure you're Perfect. hearing me. Perfect, loud and clear. It is a wonderful, awesome day to be alive in the kingdom of God. I am streaming live from Enterprise, Alabama. <laughs> so, so I am from Montego Bay. I am born and bred Montegonian. I have, I'm a mother of two, but I think that what, um, what I love most about who I am at this moment is that I am a true woman of God. And to be a part of Trumpet Call Ministry has actually meant, has been a turning point in not just myself as a woman, but as in my walk with the Lord. I have been attending Trumpet Call for more than eight years, but within the last five years or, or so, I've been really plugged in. And I have recently, within the last three years, I think, become a part of a truly wonderful group of women called the Women of Influence, who I believe have had such a great impact, not just on me, but on a wide variety or a wide cross-section of the professional women in the city of Montego Bay. I'm an attorney, an attorney by profession, and sometimes as Christians, we tend to not believe or are or, or, or able to integrate what we do with our walk with the Lord. And sometimes even as professional women, we find it difficult to balance a lot of the struggles that we face. Even as women of God, we find it difficult to balance or walk with the Lord, with families, and to integrate our life completely with our walk and um, what women of influence has meant for me is that um it is it is a sisterhood that has really assisted my growth as a christian woman it has solidified my faith my relationship with my sisters and i can say to you that i've never thought of myself as being a woman in a women's ministry because my personal position or opinion of, of women, even Christian women, was not always what it is now. I have always been very reluctant to be part of groups, especially groups of women. And I have found that God has not just led me to be a part of this group, but I am now not just sold out on ministry, but I am sold out on women and empowering women and being there for other women and building women up. And and getting women to that point where they realize that we are better, stronger together, not just in ministry, but in life. And what Women of Influence is for me, it is a sisterhood. The women that I have met, the women whose life has impacted my life, they have gotten me through some of the worst experiences that I've ever gone through. And it, it is not it is good to be a part of a organization a church body but it is a different thing to be connected to a group that is not just about talk but is also about living a christian life with support so the women of influence are a very big part of my support system and it's just it's not just me getting support it is also me giving support and my life is now completely different so thank you very much, guys, and I'm happy to be here. 
Thank you so much for joining us from your, your trip in the U.S. So good that you could join us, Stacey Ann. So Beth, tell us a bit about where you're from and what you do, please. Hi, blessings, everyone. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Wonderful. My name is Beth Harris. And first, I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. Rusha, for what you're doing with the Arise and Blossom talk show and inviting me um, today and giving me an opportunity to share this platform with an awesome group. I mean, a phenomenal group of women that I've come to love and respect. I echo the sentiments of Nikki giving um, honor to Apostle Mary, who <laughs> we all love. We all love. We all love so much. And our lives have been transformed as a result of our obedience. So I honor God for her. Um, for those of you who may not know me, who are watching, I'm from the beautiful island of New Providence in the Bahamas. I'm the mother of four. I'm not in ministry full time yet. As it relates to my professional background, I've spent more than 20 years in the vacation club industry at the senior management level for the most part. And it was that career path that led me, that God used to lead me to Jamaica in 2014. Of course, that was a setup. I thought I came to Jamaica for a job, but God had something else in mind. More on that later. We just give him glory. Um, so after three years in Jamaica, I moved back to the Bahamas for about two years where I got remarried. Um, I also worked as a sales um, operations manager for the Southern Bahama Islands and Eleuthera. Currently, my husband and I live in Atlanta, so I'm streaming live from Atlanta. And I'm so excited to be here. And a lot of my energy and focus right now is directed towards preparing to launch a project that God has tasked me with. So I'm really excited about it. And um, by his grace, I'll be ready to launch soon. Congratulations. That sounds exciting. So perhaps now we can just have a discussion about what do you think some of the issues affecting women are? Beth, you can start. Okay. Well, you know, it's, in, in, today's, in today's society right now, it's difficult to talk about any issues affecting society without the inclusion of COVID-19, right? Um, the reality is the pandemic has affected women on many fronts. Um, economically, it's been staggering. Um, the unemployment rate has been at record levels globally. So, you know, you have a lot of women who have to deal with that. You have a lot of women that are small business owners who have had to streamline and downsize significantly just to be able to keep their business open. And even in some cases, many businesses around the world, as we all know, have had to close at record numbers. You have a lot of women that may not be dealing with the unemployment rate per se because they're operating as essential workers. So they still have the job, but they still are faced with a lot of the um, vicissitudes that are accompanying the global pandemic right now. So right now in today's society, whether you are a single woman, whether you're a wife, whether you are a mother or both or a single mother, um, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety in today's um, society. And as we know, these things tend to have a domino effect on things like managing good mental and emotional health. So there's a lot of aspects that women are dealing with in today's society. A whole nother component is, you know, unfortunately, there's some data that was issued from many reason, regions that strongly suggests the significant increase of domestic violence cases. Now, if you know anything about domestic violence, that was a pandemic before COVID-19. So it just compounded the issues. So suffice it to say in today's society, wherever you are as a woman, if there's ever a time we needed God, it's now. So, there's, so we know that God can do it. Thank you so much. Nikki, would you like to add any other issues you find affecting women in today's society, Nicola? Um, yes, thank you. Dr. Rusha, I was thinking that a lot of people that come into the counseling room 
they've suffered a lot of pain, emotional pain from backgrounds of really spoken to in a manner that empowered them or made them or built them up. It was always something to tear them down. Um, in, in our Jamaican society, unfortunately, people come from many different um, broken homes. Um, there's abuse, there's incest, there's rape, there is oh, all manner of things that have trampled down our women. And, and yet still, you know, yet still, women are, are what hold a family together. I think of even in this time too, you know, they're, they're expected to, to raise the family, provide the meals. Um, now they have to be teachers. First of all, I mean, they train up the children, yes, but they'd send them to school. Now they're, the children are there too. So they're learning now how to be teachers as well as being that lovely wife for the husband, prepare the meals, do the and all of that. So I really admire women. I, I mean, women have a capacity that God gave them to, to be and to do. To be and to do. And to have that, um, that emotional, um, I, 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 I see that big heart. That big, big heart encompass not just themselves but their neighbors their their other like like look at us here i mean the the, the love we have for one another is is amazing so our hearts our hearts can expand bigger and bigger than we could ever imagine so but, i was just thinking about those things that really affect women in society and um and and the trials that they carry and the scars the scars that they bear. That is so true. Um, Yvette, would you like to any, add any other thing that came to you in terms of issues women face in our society? Yeah, I, I, I like to piggyback on, on what Nikki said. Um, both of us work into the counseling department and spanning um, ethnic group, spanning background, there is one familiar crisis I, I, I see in, in, in every area, and it is a void that needs to be filled. And I see our women, whether rich, whether middle class, whether poor, um, going for stuff to fill that void. Going for love in the wrong place, going for you know, filled with alcohol, filled with marijuana, um, filled with job, and mainly an identity crisis, filling a void with looking for love in the wrong place. And I do not want to come off um, too spiritual, but as, as a trained counselor, after getting that degree, I realized that that degree, <laughs> we, we have to have Jesus in every counseling session. That trumps, I mean, that void, there is no certificate. There is nothing in my training, and I trained in a Christian institution, and I realized that the void of the, the identical crisis in our woman, the only thing that can fill it up is knowing God. That's the only thing, is meeting, is meeting Jesus. The only thing that can, that can fill that area, Dr. Arusha, because our woman, I mean, as Nikki said, so much abuse from childhood, you know, and... Um, there's so many things in their life and we go after the titles, you see, people going after titles to, 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 to fill that era, to, you know, go after materialism, you know, sometimes all dressed up and who is under that makeup? Who is under that clothes? Who is under behind that jewelry? Who is behind that Benz? You know, so, um, 
the facet. There is a facet that I see that um, needs to be touched, the facet of the love of God in, in, in every one of our, of our women. So true, Yvette. Um, to Hoya, anything you'd like to add about issues affecting women? Yes, I believe that two of the main issues that affect women in today's society um, are fear and anxiety. I believe that especially based on what Beth was saying that during the time that we're living in now, which is a health crisis, an economic crisis, you realize that a lot of women are exp experiencing fear and anxiety. They have to try and balance everything in the natural realm. I mean, for, for some women, whether old or young, they may be living alone. It, it's, it's causing um, emotional distress. You know, those people will need um, lots and lots of counseling. Some people have to learn to draw, or not some, but all have to draw on their faith during this time because you realize that the world in which we live is a man-made system right and yeah. that you cannot rely on man to solve things that you cannot see that you yeah. don't have any control over you have to turn to your faith you have to have a relationship with god you have to call on a higher purpose you have to be intentional in the way how you live in the way how you treat your own brothers and sisters and I feel like because um, you have some women that lack Christian values and they are not in touch with, their, with, with the Holy Spirit or they are not having a consistent relationship with God, you realize that fear and, and anxiety will take precedence in their life and they don't know how to maneuver the crisis that they're facing today. And so it is important that in this time, as women, as mothers, as daughters, as sisters, right, as wives, that we learn that what we have to do in this time is to have a relationship with God, turn to the word of God to guide us. The, the word of God is living and sharper than any two-edged sword. Two -edged sword. So you have to know the word of God to be able to live during a time like this. For sure. And Stacian, anything else you'd like to add about issues affecting women today? Yes, um, you know, just going along with the conversation that has been taking place, I think for me, um, I would use one word to kind of encompass what also Tahoya had said about fear and anxiety, stress, women, have been experiencing, especially in the last um, six or seven months, a higher level of stress than normal. Um, I believe too that women have always been strong on the front lines, especially now with COVID, that was also an even bigger requirement. You had women who had to be out there on the front lines in the health sector, and then at the same time having to go home to balance families. You had women, as Nikki was saying, who had to not, not just be breadwinners, homekeepers, but now also had to be teachers. That brings another level of stress. Um, with all the other things that women have had to, to deal with in the last you know, couple of years. Um, I think that more recently, what is clear is that what women need is a proper support system. And as Yvette had said, um, because you're so busy taking care of everybody else, and because the women tend to be so busy sometimes, you know, being that professional person, being a mother, being a wife, or wearing that, wearing different heads, you find that they, if you are not grounded, you will have this emptiness that is there. And unless you have something to fill that void, then that void will get bigger and bigger and it will take over. So I agree with my sisters. There is no way to have this conversation without including that need for a sound spiritual base. And I think that that is what we have to really tar target when we're or, or speak about when we're looking at what is what the challenges are for women nowadays and what the solutions might be. Thank you. That is so true. And you know, I often say that stress 
stress is not something that necessarily comes to us as one big gift or one big bag. I agree that the circumstances have been overwhelming and it's okay to feel overwhelmed at times, yeah. but we certainly can't stay there, right? Stress is what we create by how we react to our circumstances. So, you know, these women along with me know so well about the journey of living by faith and trying to increase faith where even in turbulent times, your anchor holds, you know, so you have something to rest on. Even, even when you feel weak, that's when, you know, you can rely on God's strength because we can't do it all by ourselves as these ladies have shared, right? Um, so perhaps you can tell me, what do you think are some of the qualities of the empowered woman? Yvette. The empowered woman starting with knowing who you are. For sure. You have to know who you are. Just knowing who you are, I mean, that is, that can, because we do not know who we are, at times that is what caused, that is the, the, the main road to dilemma. So first, some of what we, you know, the first one I would put is knowing who we are, knowing what we are about. Um, I would say, I, I normally say, if I don't really know as yet, um, list a list of what I want, let me make a list of what I don't want. So as a guide, you know, because some of the times we don't really can't put our foot down on, on certain things, but this is what I do not want. All right. I do not want for me at 50, I'm uneducated. At 50, I am, you know, there are little things. Okay. So I know that. So that can be a, um, a guide. Um, one of the other things is getting connected with the right people. I realize that a big percentage of the success that I have in my life was it because I actually wrote them or I actually dreamt them. It was being around people. Wow. I realize that people empowered me I had role models in my life and it was sometimes after I said, oh my God, I didn't even realize that I was actually walking out what I've seen other women do. So we have women of influence now. I used to be a part of this women's um, group, Women's The Glow. And all the women that were there on the management team, they, they were educated women. They were women who were doing great. I wasn't educated. And I want to be like those women. Those women were on fire for God. I want to be like those women. So we influence people and people influence us. And that is why first, we have to know who we are because we are always influencing somebody and we are influenced. We're influencing others, right? And others are influencing us. I remember the first day I stepped into trumpet call. And when I look on Pastor Mary, I, I said, I want to be like her. This was a woman of power, a Christian woman, and normally we would see Christian women having the long, long dress and <laughs> have on the hat and, and I said, my God, this is just boom shakalaka. I mean, a woman who is 21st century dressed and filled with the power of God. Amen. Right? So who we get around, guys, who we get around is, is, is right really essential and i think if we have those three things there are more but i mean if we have those three things in and the, the, the other one there is a fourth one the family yes we can't left out the family if we just stay in touch with 
you know, with, with our family. So knowing who we are, knowing what we are about, right? And getting in a circle, getting in a circle of with people who we want to be like, you know, so like for somebody who just gets saved, just got baptized, you cannot be hanging out with your friends that you used to party with. You have to begin to hang out with women who have overcome sin because that is the way you're going to overcome. All right. So that is my few words. Yeah, thanks for those practical um, points, Yvette. So true. Now, yeah. guys, before we move one step further, <laughs> I have to let you know that there is another lady that we really wish could have been with us here today because yeah. she is a part of our building team, Kerry Ann Quelo Cassidy. And again, we send condolences to her and her, you know, her family. They recently um, put their mother in, her mother-in-law to rest. Um, but you know, Kerry, as we know her, she would not miss this. So she's actually here on the Zoom call with us. I don't know if we'll get to see her, but we may get to hear from her to give her input because she has been a driving force yeah. too as a leader amongst us. Um, Kerry? Hi, Dr. Lucia. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, everyone. W welcome, welcome, my darling. How are you? I am great. I'm great. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not able to come on camera as yet. Just finished the Sunday dinner with the family. As Yvette awesome. said, family is so important. So, but I wanted to be a part of uh, this discussion because this is definitely personal to myself, to TCMI, and to women of influence. And I felt when I wasn't a part of it that some li missing link, there's a missing link because we are one in the body of Christ. And I felt like I was just one of that disciple that was missing. So thanks for having me. Yes. Just tell us a bit about yourself and some of the issues affecting women and what's, what are the qualities of empowered women? Okay. Um, well, I'm, I work in the hotel industry and I got saved over seven years now, been going to TCMI for over 12 years. Um, and what can I say in a nutshell? I am a, a living testimony that, that the, of the goodness of God. I mean, there's no other way. I mean, my own journey, my own walk, being somebody who was abandoned, uh, is a testimony to itself that, listen, we don't have to choose drugs. We don't have to choose rum. We don't have to choose um, any, any substance to replace that void because God truly rules and reigns. And to, to, to many, we could argue this sounds very cliche, but this is the only way. He's the truth, the life, the only way. And I'm a living testimony to that. Um, you know, so you're able to empower other women women, sorry, by your own uh, circumstances or your own experiences or what all your breakthroughs, you're able to say, look, you know, I used to do this. I used to be an addict. I used to be, uh, I, I used to be an unbeliever. I used to be, you know, whatever the situation is. For me personally, I used to feel abandoned and rejected. So friendships, if somebody uh, betrayed me, that would go to that deep rooted place and because we're now rooted and grounded and aligned and in accordance with the word of god that's the only thing honestly in a nutshell that has sustained me until this day i mean 45 years later on earth one would think oh my goodness how can you ever survive not having a father and a mother having your mother leave you at a nursery at the tender age of three weeks old and you have not given up on life how can you now be at in, a, in an executive position in the tourism industry of over 30 years, which by the way, I started at the very bottom because the principle of honor that I've also learned. So a part of the characteristics of being a, a woman who can empower others is that you have to learn the principles, the principles of honor. You might like your boss, but you have to honor your boss. And all my life, I have done that. Every one of my bosses, I am still uh, respectable and remain in good, uh, good standing. You understand? Wow. There's some principle of love and honor, a principle of exchange, a principle of letting go, of uh, letting go of all that unforgiveness. Do not allow that to fester, to manifest itself. I mean, in this day and age, so many people are dying from diseases that are self-believe, uh, self-inflicted to some degree because of unforgiveness. And my personal walk, my personal breakthrough 
is that I have forgiven my mother. Therefore, the spirit of rejection and fear has no place in my life. So even the in Jamaican words, pop down, coming up with the put that rouge on, put the lipstick on, get it going, because we have more people in power. Despite what we went through last night, despite what we went through yesterday, despite the things of the past, despite our shortfalls, women of influence, we have to know how to get up and Amen. move on and push past whatever it is that the enemy wants to tell you, you have to remain in that quote unquote mess. So here I am, it's just a privilege to share this platform with my sisters who have all helped me. I know Nikki is on the call. I'm not sure if the Mary is, but believe you me, this is the truth. I don't know where I would be if I was not saved, if I'd given my life to the Lord. And also I don't know where I would have been if I did not understand how to interpret the word of God, how to apply it to my life, to my work life, to my marriage, to my children. And even if we don't have all the breakthroughs, God's timing is the perfect timing as you rest in perfect peace. Thank you so much, Carrie. Now, guys, Carrie is such a living example. We have no excuse. You know, we all have been dished out different circumstances in life, but her life is a living testimony that you were made on purpose, for purpose, right? Amen. And I That's have it. seen Perry grow through that testimony. She's not talking these things to sound good and proper, but she That's has right. walked the walk of, of conquering forgiveness, right? After being abandoned at three weeks, not knowing her mom, her father. But you look at Kerry and you wouldn't have a clue because as Kerry enters a room, her presence, the presence of God is there, you know, and, and you're so serving and giving. So I'm sure that your trials have now become your testimony. And so we want to mash up some things in the spiritual realm now and to give you keys that you can be empowered no matter what you've been dished out, right? I mean, if you picture a, a $1,000 bill, you can crumple that bill, you can jump on it. No matter what you do, that bill is still a $1,000 bill and you can still take it to the shop and get stuff. So you still have value, ladies. So thanks for sharing that, um, Kerry. And um, Stacey, can you tell us a bit about your walk with, with the Lord and how you've been empowered? You, you started mentioning it, how you've been empowered by other women in your lives and how you've empowered others. Well, Arusha, I, I can tell you that I, I am a creature of my surroundings. I'm a creature who has evolved because of the amount of love and support that I have get. I've gotten, sorry. I wouldn't be who I am if I were not nurtured in the way that I was nurtured by the people around me. Now, I, my, my experience and background is a little different from Kerry's. Um, I grew up in a home earlier with my mother and father. I was actually the youngest for a very long time. And I was actually nurtured in, in a, with my brothers and sisters telling me every single day how beautiful I was, how wonderful I was, that I could do anything that I wanted to do. And what that did for me was that it showed me and it taught me that I could do anything I wanted to do in the world. And what they also did for me was that they created a safe space for me to make mistakes. So I was taught from a very early age that it was okay to mess up because you had somewhere that you could come, you could come home to. So, you know, growing up, I, I had that when I was younger, but during the teenage years, going through life, um, I was also a young mother. Um, it could have gone either way. I got pregnant when I was 18, had my daughter when I was 19. And so even with a semi-perfect, you know, family structure, you still mess up, you still go off on your own. But that thing where you know that you have that support, is always one of the things that makes or breaks you. And what, what, what I learned from that was that um, love is really the answer. And therefore, when I became a Christian and I 
and I started to, you know, go to, to, to trumpet call, learning about God, I was able to actually identify that while it is that I had a good, you know, family structure in the, in the physical, when, when that translated is to the spiritual, it is so much more easy for me to understand because I am not just Mr. Young's daughter. I am the daughter of a king. I am no longer able to, to, to know that, okay, you mess up and you will have a physical father who will be there to, to help you to, to grow through your messes. But I have a spiritual father who is even greater than that, that um, physical father who loves me so much. And then he gave me a family that it, it, it's not a blood relative, but it's a kingdom relation. And, and maybe I'm wrong by saying it's not a blood relative because we were all, we all come under that blood covering of, of Jesus Christ. And, you know, I'm, the reason I'm going there is because I, I want people to understand that that family structure, it doesn't have to be a physical family structure where you're related by, 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 by blood like that. When you come into the kingdom, the reason why um, Kerry was able to survive was because even though that physical day-to-day -day, you know, structure was not there, she was a child of God who God now chose her family and placed her in a situation where she was able to get that kind of love. And now, even though she did not have brothers and sisters necessarily growing up, I can tell you, she is now my sister. I don't feel any differently now with the sisters that I that I celebrate with at church and I and I've grown with the level of support that we give each other to hire that beautiful smile lights up my day every day. <laughs> Arusha, the same for you and Kerry. You know, it we have formed a bond that it is not biological, it is spiritual and it's just as strong. So for me, um, my growth in the kingdom has been phenomenal. I am now a stronger, more confident woman because of that. I can also add to the discussion about being a woman of a, um, the qualities of, of an empowered woman because I know my worth. And my worth does not lie in what other people think of me. My worth does not lie in what the devil thinks of me. My worth lies in my identity as a child of God. There you go. And therefore, that is my ultimate empowerment. Thank you so much, Stacey. Beth, can you share um, what are some of the qualities of an empowered woman and tell us a bit about how you've been empowered throughout your life in your walk with God? Oh my gosh, so much of my life has been impacted by empowered women. I think, you know, an empowered woman is a resilient, resourceful, innovative woman who understands her source. Because it's in him that we live, it's in him that we move, it is in him that we have our very being. So from the beginning, a truly empowered woman understands where her strength comes from. And I praise God for a mother who took her walk with God seriously. Um, she modeled a life of prayer, of faith, and hope in God. Life certainly was not without its challenges, but she was she she did her best to ensure that all I'm her, I'm number nine. She she did her best to ensure that all of her nine children received a sound spiritual foundation. So I thank God for that. As an adult, as a young adult. I got, I got married as a young adult, and together we worked in ministry together. We both served a leadership role in the ministry that we were a part of. And, you know, eventually, with all of that, the marriage still ended badly, I might add. And, you know, with all of the guilt and the shame of having to understand and face the reality that you are now a part of the high statistics of failed marriages in the church, right? And I think for me, the majority of my guilt and my shame was rooted in what I allowed my children and myself to endure for so long. So when I came to Jamaica, 
even though I had the outward expression of success, only a truly empowered woman with eyes to see in the spirit be able to have seen the brokenness that I had compartmentalized and tucked away in my mind. And I can tell you, when I walked through the doors of Trumpet Call Ministries International in Montego Bay in 2014, oh my goodness. I thought I came to Montego Bay for a job, but I was completely set up by God. God had orchestrated a series of events um, to do business with me. And when I walked through those doors, uh, praise and worship had already begun. The presence of God was so rich. It was so rich. All I could do was lift my hands and Immediately as I lifted my hands, I saw, I got a vision, Dr. Richard, of, a, of an oxygen mask being put on my face. Oh, wow, wow. And for the first time, I was able to feel like I could breathe. Like, I didn't even realize I wasn't breathing until wow. that moment I was breathing in a fresh way. And then I started to reflect on all of the events, the sequence of events that God had orchestrated just bring me to moment brought me to a foreign land that I've never been to before wow. to do business with me. That's some serious unrelenting love. He'll do anything to grab me across the waters. And so as I started to cry, I think for me, the most memorable part of that experience, Apostle Mary, I remember she was trying to end the service and she was saying, I'm trying to close the service, but God is giving me a word for someone in here. And suffice it to say, God used Apostle to pull my file live in the service, right? And um, she said something that just, and I knew it was for me, I knew it was a word that was directly for me. And she said that there's somebody in here, <clears throat> there's somebody in here actually believes that they have been disqualified wow. from fulfilling their purpose. Wow, wow, wow. God told me to tell you mm -hmm. that he has not changed his mind concerning you. Wow, wow, wow. God used an empowered woman in the form of Apostle Mary Wilder, who chose to walk in obedience to the call of God on earth. Amen to reach in the crevices of my heart. Let me tell you, God used Apostle Mary to remind me that the calling and the giftings of God are without repentance and that there's no grief, no shame, no pain, that I had the power to cancel God's call over my life. Amen. And that began my spiritual recalibration, if you will my spiritual realignment and <clears throat> oh my god it just and when i look at the beautiful women on this call i'm so in, i'm so grateful to all of the women on this call and other women of the women of influence that have enriched my life you've been such an incredible support system we've been such an incredible support system and encouragement of prayer and love for each other. It has truly enriched my life. My whole walk with God has been impacted by a group of phenomenal women who have had their own challenges, but because we know our source, we're able to rise above the challenges and not only be resilient and resourceful for our own families, but we're able to spread God's love and reflect his light to empower others. So I'm just, I'm just truly grateful. In that moment when Pastor Mary gave that word of knowledge, I was completely undone. I was completely in awe of God. And so as I continue to press towards God's mark from my life, he, as he always does, always calling me outside of my comfort zone, right? He's been very consistent. <laughs> That. And he and I have had many conversations about that, right? <laughs> like this moment, Dr. Rusha is <laughs> out of my comfort zone, as you know. Okay? Go ahead, girl. <laughs> as you know. 
Um, what I could truly say over the last two years, as I've been working on this project and God has been giving me glimpses of the next level and what he's going to be calling me to do and the level of transparency and vulnerability and all these things. And I keep asking him, God, are you sure? Are you sure? God, are you sure? And one day the Holy Spirit so kindly yet firmly said to me, Beth, it's not about your comfort. It's about the call. Amen. And that, I right, that, one knows. that was a direct download, the Holy Spirit said to me. So I, anytime I feel anxious, like after I accepted your invitation and I called my sister last night in a panic, say, why did I accept this invitation? <laughs> <laughs> God reminded me last night, it's not about your comfort. It's about the call. So I give him glory. Beth, I thank God that you were brought into our lives because, I mean, you're there saying you're thankful for what we've done for you, you know, but you don't, I don't even think you have a clue what you have done for us. Now I'd share with you guys that day when we were called to the meeting to birth the Women of Influence Ministry, we, we didn't have a clue what we're there for. And so it was about 10, 12 of us and Apostle Mary in the room. and. We each were going around the table, sharing a bit about ourselves and our walk with God. And you know, we're each there sharing, sharing, sharing. And I could never forget how Beth broke the ice in that meeting. <laughs> Beth dramatically stretched her hands across the table, leaned in and said, ladies, I can assure you, I am the least among you. Never to know this when we fast forward to our meetings, Nikki, you remember those to Hoy, you remember those early meetings. Beth would share some testimonies on faith. I mean, guys, we'd be there, you have your long day at work, but you're looking forward to get with the girls and go to the Bible study, and now it's like a whole church setting. And back then, we we when we got together, all weariness, all cares, everything left. We laughed, we cried, we shared, we were real. It wasn't about looking at what each other had on or trying to compete. It was just a real safe space. And Beth, I thanked you in the past and I'm thanking you publicly again because through your examples of faith, now remember she came to a strange country for work. She felt broken in every area of her life. And she found a way to get her kids to her. And when we would listen to those stories and laugh and cry with her on faith, you gave me the power to... to, to transact some big breakthroughs in my life when I was going through stuff, you know? So sometimes we, we think we have to put this nice little package and our tidy little mask on and have, it, have everything all together. But guys, oftentimes we don't have it all together. And it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to share because sometimes what you're going through, the reason you had to go through it, one of the benefits is so that you can help another woman um, overcome that, you know? So... I thank you. I could go on and on and on, but I thank you, Beth, as well, for what you have done for us in your living testimony. Um, so, Tahoya, tell us um, some of the qualities you find of an empowered woman, woman and a bit about your walk with God and, you know, um, how you've been empowered by women in your life. All right. Um, I think there are five, five main qualities of an empowered woman that is confidence strong sense of self, as some of the other women have mentioned, independence, strong faith, and being purposeful. Um, I think all those qualities um, can be exhibited in the characteristics of a powerful person, um, a woman who is empowered. Um, my walk, oh, I want to say I my walk has fluctuated over the years as a Christian. I got baptized as a teenager. I didn't understand exactly. I think the reason for me be, um, um, baptizing at that state in my life or the state that I was in at that time in my life um, was one because I was about to be married 
And I wanted to put God at the center of that marriage because I was just proposed to. So I think at that time, the intention for becoming, for being baptized wasn't one of, uh, wasn't personal enough. It was because of someone else. And so after that, when I look back, um, when I was in my 20s, I realized that my walk with God wasn't where it should be. And I was distracted. It was about ambition. It was about becoming educated and achieving material things in the world. And as I grew, I realized, as I got older, I realized that my life was empty. It was absolutely empty. No matter how many things I had accomplished, it wasn't enough. And it wasn't until I, I had my first child, I, I got married, I had my first child, and I realized that I wanted more for myself as a woman. I wanted purpose. I did not want to live my life for just me and my family. I wanted to extend whatever gifts that had given to me by God Almighty. And so in my 30s, I found myself a trumpet call. And I started going there each Sunday and just becoming fulfilled after each service. And so I recommitted myself to God and I became filled with the Holy Spirit. And now that I'm in my 40s, I have found a wonderful purpose, which is to share the word of God with other women in society and to share my experiences and to testify to others how God have built me up and moved me from strength to strength. And as Beth mentioned, I kid you not, trumpet call is at a church where you go and you warm the bench. Okay, it is a very active ministry. <laughs> you are called to this house because you have a purpose and God created you for a purpose. And so whatever gifts you have, Whatever call that is on your life, it will be declared, it will be exercised, it will be manifested in the highest level. Because that church, that, um, this body of Christ that we're a part of, right, is about bringing souls closer to God. And so that has been my experience um, as a Christian, um, how I have been empowered. I have been empowered through the testimonies of my sisters. I have been empowered by my pastor to challenge myself from the other leaders within that ministry to step out of my comfort zone and to share my God-given gifts. And I am very thankful because I don't know where my life, where I would be as a mother, where I would be as a, as a daughter and as a wife. Because I feel like, I, I don't feel, I know, I know that I know that I know that the God that I serve is faithful. He has brought me peace and joy and love and prosperity. These last, these 44 years of my life. And I'm forever thankful and forever grateful to my sisters. Um, in the woman of influence and to my pastor and to everybody because i believe that god put builders put god put helpers put, put um burden bearers you know earth angels people that are strategically placed in our lives to build us up to show us different strategies and to encourage us in our walk with Christ. And I'm forever grateful, forever thankful for my experience, for my Christian walk with this ministry. Thank you so much for sharing. And we say amen to Hoya. Nikki, can you tell us a bit about your walk with God and how you have um, your role in the Women of Influence ministry and how you have empowered and been empowered? Thank you for that, Dr. Arusha. Can I tell you, I think it's hilarious. Tahoya had to text me to say I, I was upside down. I'm having <laughs> internet challenges at my house, so I'm back on the phone, but I'm going to keep the phone right side up instead of upside down. That's fine. Um, my walk with the Lord. Well, um, 
I got baptized in the Holy Spirit at age 17 uh, with the gift of speaking in tongues. I, um, I got married, had a, you know, being a wife and a mother had its challenges. Uh, the time I was in Kingston and uh, St. Catherine, I think um, that time of my life, the first four years were rough, were very rough. Um, I, I'm not going to share it today. Yeah. And I think I, I don't because I have not asked permission to do so. And, um, but that pressed me into God. Like you'd never know. Um, people, you know, you can carry the shame like Beth was saying, but God has a way. God has a way of just meeting us right there where yeah. with our brokenness, with our pain, with our crying out to him. I remember I, I didn't know much of the word at the time, but when I tell you, he would drop some scripture on me, Philippians 4, 6 to 9. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. When I tell you, the word started to work in me. Wow. And I started to begin to hold on to the word. Meanwhile, I was at, um, I used to be a, a systems manager. So one plus one used to equal to two every time. But my life was not adding up. Uh, but God. Can I say, but God. Oh, wow. Life took me, um, when my children were, I think it was about 22 years ago, I went to a conference. And in that conference, we were supposed to be broken up into groups. And this was my beginning with a Bible study. And the importance of, of being built up in the word more and also this fellowship of getting to be real with one another take off the mask take off the pain take off whatever and and allow god in and and trusting your heart to other people and so i think that was 22 years ago i started uh, going to a bible study in kingston and that was with my dear friend Catherine radlin who had beautiful ashes ministry and in that place, when I tell you the word of God, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. I learned to love Jesus like I'd never loved Jesus before. I started to know who I was in him. And that started to do a work in me. The word started to work in me. And you know, the scripture says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you, God. And I started to just fall in love more and more. So the Bible studies that I had gone to did that in me. And so when apostles started to say, let's do this here, a trumpet call, and we had that first meeting. And I can remember Dr. Rusha say, you know, I don't know about this, you know, I can't stand drama. A women carry <laughs> drama, drama. And can I tell you, it's not been one bit of drama. Amen. The Amen. Lord has Amen. not won. Amen. At a powerful level Amen. because of the Amen. connection, the deep connection with one another and with God. Yes. And I, yes. I was just so undone. And I can remember Amen. us going to the first pilot one we did, Dr. Rusha, when we first started. Yes. And um, we didn't want to leave. When we got <laughs> there at night, we were there giggling and laughing. It was like we found our joy all back Amen. again. Amen. And it was phenomenal. Amen. Girls, we can be childlike with our daddy. Yes. We yes. can climb up yes. into his lap. Yes. And we yes. can laugh and we can yes. play. Yes. And we can be filled with Amen. the joy of the Lord. Yes. And it was yeah. just so amazing. And so that's where we started. And, I, you know, I think about um, being empowered by women. I've been empowered by you guys. You guys have so empowered me. Apostle Mary, can you imagine sitting at another person's feet? I mean, you know, the scripture, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. What a stand that woman has for the oh, principles oh, wow. of God. God. For, for, for God, the fear of God that you preach today. I mean, something transacted with all of us at church. 
where we had that baptism of the fear of the Lord. Amen. So, I mean, I, I'm just so grateful for where God has me. I'm so grateful for my sisters. I love my church. I love where God is taking us from, as, as, as Tahoya said, from faith to faith, strength to strength, glory to glory. I love how God has worked in you, ladies. How I see him through you. How I see Jesus being fashioned in you. And I'm just undone. I'm wow. just undone. Thank Me you. <laughs> and thank, thank you, you too, Nikki. Um, you know, thank Apostle you. Mary, I, I think she has that ability, as somebody said, to see in us what we didn't even see in ourselves. And you can't say no to Apostle Mary. You know, when she asks you to do something and you know it is, it is coming from God, you know that you've been made for this, you're equipped for this. And you're just at a point where you say, yes, we started with Nikki initially um, being our leader in that, that first um, set of pilot, you know, the, the, that first group. And Nikki's spirit, she was just what was needed for such a time as that, you know? Amen, very amen. Very warm, very loving, very, uh, you know, just real, just natural, just just really real, you know, like a, a big sis slash mama, every, auntie, everything in one. So we thank you and we honor you, Nikki, for leading us. I remember that day when I think it was you, myself, and Apostle Mary were in the room. And she turned to me and she said, um, Dr. Arusha, would you like to lead us? I think, Nikki, you were taking on another responsibility. And she turned to me and she's like, would you like to, you know, we'd like you please to serve in this area of leading the Women of Influence Ministry. Now, in my natural, I wanted to turn around and say, who, me? <laughs> because, you know, you felt least equipped. But then in the spiritual, I was at a place where I knew it just, a light bulb turned on. I'm like, oh, that's why I had to go through all of that to equip me to do this. And so I didn't even process it mentally. Spiritually, I just knew that, yes, you just have to just say yes. And this is, God, you know, God will equip you. So I thank you for the example. I thank Yvette too for her example in as you can see guys we i can't make this up these ladies when i tell you and i'm trying not to tear up but genuine love genuine Amen. love Amen. a genuine sisterhood Jesus. i thank god for you kerry tell us a bit Amen. about your walk and your journey in women of influence your walk with god well wow what can i say so I started out in a Catholic church and, you know, there is one God. There is only one God. There is only one Yeshua. And, you know, a Catholic church serves its purpose and that's great. But because of my pain, because of my hurt, because of my rejection from I mean, God created my mother and my father and my mother left me at the nursery and no turning back. I felt nothing in my Catholic church, though, yes, I went to Sunday school and I was blessed with people who, like the three uh, wise men and baby Jesus, put it in a simple form, blessed me with three older ladies that kept me in that restaurant wrap of love, the love of the Lord. They could have given me up to government or leave me by the wayside, but they fed me with very little. And though they were not rich, I, I ate egg and bread, and egg and bread was taken to school. And the Milo, and the Milo got hot, but it was all you had. I was that child with when the Nutribun um, van came after school. Everybody had extra money to buy cooked food and all these nice things at the tuck shops. But I would wait for the Nutribun to come to get that bun and that not so great tasting milk <laughs> <laughs> at the time. But you know what? That also was sufficient for me at that time. So on my walk, 
you know, I knew that there was purpose. I knew that God had a calling on my life. And the more I saw his goodness, you know, I moved from house to house. I mean, every step of the way, you know, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. The plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. I have lived that life. I'm telling you. So I moved from a Catholic church to Tabernacle Church, and then it got a little, little loud. That was the first time I, 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 I heard tongues and 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 start to experience the Holy Spirit. But as I every every step of the way, you know, my my, my journey in the hotel industry and couples tower island entertainment coordinator, as I said, I started at the bottom. So, but every step of the way so I left that job went to another hotel and then I went to that hotel because there was a church down the road and that church down the road was the tabernacle church do you understand so God was putting me in place to take me to go deeper in him to go deeper in him all the way after that you know I got married I moved to Montego Bay started to attend trumpet call ministries and you know, I moved from one hotel to the other. Now I'm working at another five-star hotel. Then um, I, my position was made redundant. And I looked on it like, oh God, what have I done? What did I do to, re to deserve this? And I'm telling you my testimony to say to you that you have to stand in faith. And you have to listen to the word of God. You have to listen voice Jacob said got feelings but let me tell you it is a spirit of the living God and when you have eyes to see and ears to hear and to abide and obey and you walk in faith you will not humble but you will push past that earlier on and so what I said when I was told to be redundant because I accepted and I said you know what I said earlier on about honor and at that job, I honored, you know, the, the God Almighty. And I said, okay, let's do it right. I, uh, do my resignation. And it was three months. And I sat out the three months. And I trained somebody else to, su to succeed me. And so on. I did everything by the book, you know. But then I didn't realize that God was setting me up for something great. Because when I did that job, I moved on to another one principle of honor, um, God not only rewarded me financially more than the previous job and any other jobs that were, um, were there, but he rewarded me financially. When I went to Trumpet Call and started to experience the Holy Spirit and Apostle Mary Wilde laid hands on me, then I didn't have any kids and I had fibroids. I had a big fibroid as big as a breadfruit and Apostle Mary and Nikki or big sister Nikki <laughs> or big sister Nikki I don't even think she remembers this but it was an altar call and I went up and Apostle Mary laid her hands on my womb hot fire going through my body and Nikki was left to pray over me Nikki and Auntie Pat and they prayed and let me tell you something I felt the living God through my through my bones right now I'm talking online and I am telling you I'm trembling because of the goodness and mercy of God let me tell you there was no other there was no other way. And I realized that I had one foot in and I had one foot out with my walk. I was being a hypocrite. God provided his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. He was wounded huh? on our behalf. And I was like, I have to give him my all. So I continued to engage God. And I continued to accelerate and I was just hungry, hungry, hungry. I got the gift of tongues at Trump Trumpet Call Ministries. I experienced God at another level at Women's Encounter at the Esther Conferences because our pastor, our apostle, she is called, she's chosen God. She has the strategies to put her out and to root out and to, to deliver us from the demons in our lives. She is being called. She has, she's the vessel. She is the carrier. She is the end time carrier who has equipped us 
to stand in this in time, to stand against COVID, to stand up against anything. And I'm telling you, once I shifted my way and my place of worship and went to trumpet call, I experienced the peace, the joy, the grace, the strength of the Lord. I can literally explain to you that before I was like a cat going up a mountain. And when I met God on that mountain, I came down like a mighty lion, roaring and ascending into heaven. And that my walk because my goodness when i lost that job not lost that job when i changed job from the hotel about the redundancy and god placed me in another hotel he was so strategic one week had in my, in my resignation and as i said i had three months to you know to sit out and i would continue working on their behalf and so on and god took me to this other hotel that i'm currently at now seven years that was when i got saved but god said you have to glean your way through like ruth i'm gonna take you for a month you're gonna drive back and forth to negril for an hour and a half and before i would just drive 20 minutes to work i said lord jesus god what a peppering what a peppering what have i done you see the enemy wants you to believe that you have right. done Thing wrong but you have to trust the process ladies and gentlemen who are listening you have to trust the process because god is the great i am huh he's the abba he's the first the last the beginning and the end he has a book he knows the outcome he knows how this story ends and i'm telling you that when i was going back and forth in the grill at that hotel that was when a lady in my office played Christian music every day. And I would just listen and bask in the glory of God. And that's when I got the revelation and conviction that I had to give my life to the Lord. I gave so that whole scenario in a nutshell was a setup because God wanted me all for Himself. All for Himself. And so not just financial gain, but He wanted. He says, carry less of you and more of me because i am your creator i kept you i didn't have allow anybody to mistreat you i kept you i kept you in this process and so yes you know not being all hunky dory let me tell you as i mentioned apostle mary laid her hands on my womb why did i mention that one year later i went and i had I, I had my myomectomy, but prior to that, God presented me to uh, the best, one of the best gynecologists, um, Dr. Wendell Guthrie, and I had to go to him for how many years before he would say, cut, before he would say, take, take out her womb. She was just in her 30s, and he says, I'm not going to operate. I do not want your money. You can but when it reached to the time and I said, okay, let's go to the checklist. And he did the checklist. He said, no, it's time. Do you know that man I can remember sitting by the bedside at Andrew's Memorial when he did the operation? Let me tell you and remove that fibroid. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, eight months later, I was pregnant. Eight months later, I was pregnant. I was who is nine years old and wow. God has been so good that she has already given her life to the Lord. She got baptized at Trumpet Call Ministries. And God also gave me a double one because he did give me in a vision. I would have had two children. And he gave me Samuel and we named him Samuel Elijah Castle. Let me tell you, when God says, listen, you are rejected, he replaced that spirit of rejection with no family, no one, no one to call your own. He gave you the husband, the husband's dreams. He's not perfect and neither am I, but I continue to trust the prophet. I say I give God glory for my family. I give God glory for what they call ministry. I give God glory for my woman of influence, Stacey said earlier on, that it's not biological, but this is not cliche. I can tell you if I'm down, my sisters feel it in the spirit. Amen. Down, Amen. 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 I saw the flyer and I was not on the flyer. It wasn't about me. I said, this is not about me. I said, Doc, don't redo the flyer. I said, Doc, if I'm even in my PJs, I'm hopping on because there's a print to be a black 
when we celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. A principle. Oh, there is a principle. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be walking mad people in Montego Bay, in Kingston, wherever you are, in Bahamas, if it wasn't for the goodness. Oh, and God. yet, we hold on to his goodness. But Amen. we are living people who have walked best. You are a Amen. testimony to me. I said, Doc, Beth is going to get up and look fabulous. And she <laughs> has a death in her life in the last two years that I have. Then I have to show up. I have to show up. I have to show up. Amen. That's how I felt about being at a giving service yesterday for my late mother in law. I had to push, I had to push and still trust the process of God. So I am a living testimony. When you, have, when you have been held up, nearly raped four times, when you have been held up, gunmen over you, because you see, the enemy wanted to just snatch me. He wanted mm. to snatch me from birth. And God protected me every time from every evil and every darkness of power. He kept me. He kept me. He kept me. I could go on and on drinking. I was not always like this on this walk. And I was wretched, but God saved me. I was drinking one day with my now husband. We were just dating at the time. We went to the club. We drank. And I decided I wanted to show off and take his car and drive from, Mon from Ocho Rios back to Montego Bay. Drunk with me license no license to drive yes we all do these things past but i was driving and i collided with a super trailer and this is a little mitsubishi car and the law of gravity would say that if a little car and a big vehicle collide the little car should turn over well, ladies and gentlemen i'm a testimony of god's goodness because instead of our vehicle turning over and causing death death was rejected in the name of jesus because the sugar truck collided and turned over and people from discovery not discovery from landovery came from the hills emptied the sugar truck we fill their containers and we were saved just some scratches on my arm but the sugar trailer turned over and the heart stood still in the name of jesus i am a living testimony i am a living testimony in covid wow, wow, wow. everything is provided for us everything i prayed for i prayed exploitation and my apostle mary and my leaders on this call can tell you and Amen. everything i prayed for and ascended to heaven during our prayer time i am telling you they have been manifested god thank is you, jesus. My walk. i thank you thank you lord amen thank you so much Kerry, for being so real with us. Again, another living testimony of the goodness thank of you, God, Lord. the protection of God, the love yes. of God. And thank you too for being a big cheerleader in my life. I mean, you ladies are just awesome. Beth, yes. can you share with us some more about your experience in the Women of Influence Ministry and Women's Encounters? We're going to hear some more about the Women's Encounter coming up this week. Oh man, the women's encounters and of just the women of influence ministry. I started on the building team when the women of influence ministry launched in 2015. And um, just hearing you, Dr. Rusha and Nikki reminisce on those beginning <laughs> <laughs> meetings. Oh gosh, it was so real. But God was definitely up to something. Um, I'm sure you ladies would remember before we branched out, Apostle Mary had the building team um, go through a six or eight week um, Bible study series where Nikki led and did an incredible job, as you already said, Dr. Usher. Nikki, you know we love you. She, did, she was the right person for the job, for sure. And um, we did, I think, the Discovering the Voice of God 
series with Priscilla Shira. Oh my God, it was awesome. I mean, what can I say? It was awesome. Um, we, you know, it was an experience where you had a deeper understanding of God's word. I think we all went into that process. I know for me, it, it was the case. Going into that initial process, thinking that it was more for the purposes of training and the equipping and getting the template and the framework that we're going to use as we move forward into really, you know, launching and branching the, uh, the Women of Influence Ministry out. But it was so much more than that. It was so much more than that. Um, our, our relationship with the Father was strengthened. Our understanding of God's word went to a deeper level. I also really appreciated, as you I touched on, Dr. Rush already, it was a safe zone. Yeah. It was an, env an environment that was cultivated as a safe zone. And I think we all authentically engaged. Um, we felt the freedom to authentically engage because there was an environment that was cultivated where we could engage without the fear of judgment or condemnation. And I'm telling you, it was just, it was transformative. And I don't think any of us was the same at the end of that process. Um, we were all so fired up and ready to go when it was all done and just really creating an environment where, you know, people can feel safe, engage. We laughed. Oh, we laughed. Nikki talked about it. Oh, God. We <laughs> laughed till our belly hurt, till we cried. We laughed. The joy of the Lord was so rich. And we cried. And oh, we cried together. And we cried together. <laughs> And we prayed together. We stood in faith and covered each other in prayer. It was just such an incredible, transformative experience. And so for me, being able to pay it forward and allowing God to use me to, to do that for other women was an honor. And it was incredibly rewarding for me. Um, it, it's it's just it's just incredible, and it's just such a it's so exciting to see how the ministry is continuing to evolve and expand. God is just having His way. It's awesome. In terms of the women's encounter, oh my God, you know it's so easy for women in today's society to get consumed and distracted and lost in your day to day responsibilities. Whether you're a wife, whether you're a mother, you're a professional, whatever's going on, and so. Women's Encounter is an awesome opportunity to refuel and to reboot and to recharge. And I can say from my from personal experience, I can say this. If you go into Women's Encounter with a spirit of expectancy, God will not let you down. He will not let you down. He will meet you at your point of need, at your place of expectancy. It's a time of impartation. It's a time of healing. It's a time of deliverance. He won't let you down. Just come expectant. That's my experience in a nutshell. Thank, thank you so much, Beth. Tahoya, can you share with us some of your experience in Women of Influence and also at Women's Encounters? Okay. My experience, I think, in Women of Influence was extremely life-changing. I was a very private person and Nikki has a way of <laughs> pulling me out of my comfort zone. And so um, she challenged me to lead. Um, I learned it from the best, <laughs> Mary. Um Mary. I was encouraged to lead um, a few groups um, in the beginning. Um, one was out of my home. And it was good. It was rich. I felt, I, 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 at the time, I lived in a gated community. And, you know, this is not a community where you have large gatherings or any form of gatherings um, in the evenings, for that matter. You know, and so I had to tell my neighbors that I'll be having these meetings. And after a while, it became such a part of my life. Like, I think we did it like every three months. And I look forward to those meetings. I look forward to seeing my sisters. I look forward to the testimonies. And 
I felt like God was using me to open up and share my experiences and how he has delivered me out of various situations. And then when I heard Beth's testimony, I was like, my testimony was nothing compared to Beth. My testimony was nothing com compared to Kerry. And I thought, my God, my God. Oh, wow, wow. oh my, I mean, it was life changing. Gentlemen, woman, it was life changing. I, I learned to trust. I learned to walk in faith because I had a situation um, where I struggled with fear. Fear to be a part of a large group of friends. Fear, fear to open up. Fear to have relationships outside of my family. And so I have been delivered wow. from the spirit of fear because I became a part of the woman of influence. And I thank God every day, every day, because I wake up every day with God's mercy, his blessings is new every morning. And I feel so empowered to go out, to, to, to face the world and whatever circumstances that is going to be in my life. I'm no longer afraid. I'm no longer afraid because now I rely on the scripture. Hebrew 11 verse 7, no faith is a substance of things hoped for. I have hope. I have hope each day. I have hope. I wake up with hope. I wake up and I expect that God and the Holy Spirit is going to show up in my presence. Because he lives in me. He is the I am that I am in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, the women that I've surrounded myself with are angels. They're absolute angels. Carrie and I were like twins. <laughs> I can call any, I can call Arusha, Stacy, Carrie, um, invite Nikki at any time if I want a word, if I want a prayer, if I'm feeling down. And to me, people of God. You have to honor your brothers and your sisters. God has placed them in your life for a reason. To love. To share the word of God. And I'm very thankful. I mean, Women's Encounter, hands down, one of the best experiences of my life. So I'm telling you, next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, log on wherever you are, Bahamas, USA, Canada, log on, join us. Let's, let's give him the praise and the worship that he deserves because he has brought so many blessings into our life. Let us share our testimonies. Let us build our relationship with God. He is our creator. He is our provider. He's our healer. Ladies and gentlemen, I have nothing else to say more than you have to come and experience it for yourself. Amen. Stacey, can you share with us, piggybacking off what Tahoya said, what has been your experience at Women's Encounters? Well, um, there is just one word that comes back to mind when I speak, when I think of Women's Encounter. Um, you've heard from my sisters about the tremendous, awesome experience of being a part of this Women of Influence group. You've heard the word phenomenal being used over and over again when, you, when, when, when these ladies speak about encounters and you, you see the joy that comes over them, but you don't understand. <laughs> I remember one year, this is my second year at Women's Encounter, I was tasked with the, the job of writing name tags, Nikki, and I couldn't stop writing joy. Everybody's name tag, had joy on it. And that <laughs> entire encounter, it was like crazy man. We couldn't stop laughing. The spirit of joy was palpable for the wow. entire thing. It was almost like we were on high for the entire time. Ladies, you, you, there is just no words. Let, let me explain what encounter used to be. It's gonna be a bit different this time around because we're gonna do it online. But I know that the spirit of God is gonna turn up and turn out. Normally, when we have women's encounter, it is normally uh, a place where we strip away physically. 
We get away from the, the physical distractions of life. So when you get to the encounter, it's normally held on a mountaintop in the middle of nowhere. Your cell phones are taken away. <laughs> you are not in touch with anybody else except for the women that you're with and you're surrounded by nature. And it is organized in a way that by the end of the two-day experience, you would have had a spiritual encounter like you've never had before. Amen. And your encounter, no one encounter is ever the same. Every encounter that I've attended has always been different, but no less potent. And what I'm going to encourage you to do this time around, it is not going to be a physical separation the way it normally is, but I'm gonna encourage my sisters to a few days before to start getting into that frame of mind where you start to physically separate yourself and start to get in tune and in line with that space and um i expect that even though it is is not going to be different that we are going to find a way or the holy spirit is going to find a way to connect and turn out in a way it hasn't done before because now we are going to be able to reach millions of persons the potential to reach millions of women is even more than it was before and i i, I will say this because we have seen it. We have been forced because of this COVID, COVID epidemic to evolve and to change the way that we worship. And even though initially we thought it might have meant that we would have been less close, what, is, what it has actually done for us is it has actually solidified our faith. It has actually shown us that as Christians, we can evolve and we can be even more than we thought we could have been. And what I am expectant about is the, the, the width, the length, the breadth of the reach of God in this time. Because what we know is happening no more than ever is that there is a sense of hopelessness. There's a sense of, of need. There, there are so many things that are missing in so many of us right now. And there's a void that needs to be filled. So I'm going to encourage you to, to meet with us in this space. To, to encounter that presence of God, to meet him in this on this virtual space in a way that you've never done before. And I can tell you that you will not be the same. I have never been the same. And um, outside of the women encounters, um, what Women of Influence has done for me, oh my God. <laughs> um, I know, you know, Doc has said already that, you know, she had an apprehension for, you know, being in a group of women, because normally the stereotype is that when women get together, there's backbiting, there's fighting, there's drama. And um, that used to be, that had been my experience up to this point. And I was very reluctant to, to become a part of this group. But I can tell you that I no longer am apprehensive, but I am happy of the transformation that has taken place in my life. I am happy that we're, what, what God has said, and I, and, I, and I think that this is where Doc is gonna go next, where, when, when, she's at, when she's probably gonna ask us to speak about our roles in this, in this group. Um, you know, I, I have seen where women of influence has not just been a blessing to me, but where I have been put in a space where I have no choice but to be a blessing to those that I encounter. Mm. And, and, and for me, that has been the, um, the most amazing part of being a part of this group where you not only realize that other persons can be that kind of support for you, but when you realize that you have a purpose where your life is important to other persons. Your words can make or break another person. Your, your purpose is not just about you and your own development and about the, own de the development of your family, but your purpose is bigger than your small circle. Your purpose, that kind word, that word in the morning that you share with another sister could mean literally life and death. And it could mean the birthing 
of, of something new and spectacular in someone else that is going to get them to that point where they can fulfill their purpose. So it, it is about showing us the connectivity of the kingdom of God. It's about showing us how we are no, no you, you've heard the term, no man is an island, no man stands alone. Every single one of us has a purpose. Every single one of us has a purpose that no one else can fulfill. And our purpose is not just a purpose that is floating around in the middle of nowhere. Our purpose is interconnected with the other lives that we encounter in this kingdom, because this is a kingdom and everyone in this kingdom has a place and a duty and a purpose for the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Stacy. Kerry, can you quickly tell us some of it, some about your in, um, experience at Women's Encounters in the past? Hi. One said earlier on, it's a, a definitely an enriching experience. Um, I've been to quite a few, and I have never experienced God at that level. I mean, it's just an amazing time for you to really and truly you know uh get rid of that mess get rid of that stuff get rid of the path that's trying to hold you back the path that's coming to kill steal or destroy your personal peace i have met god upon that mountain top and once again nikki's name comes up and event i remember one year i was in the, the dining area getting a cup of coffee and event passed me and then she passed me back and she that she had that look that look of determination that she was coming after me and even nothing about me and let me tell you god uses every and anyone as long as you allow him and say yes event delivered me on the floor at women's encounter and everything she whispered in my ears ladies and maybe gentlemen on this call I am telling you, was accurate. The prophetic was so potent at Women's Encounter. Nikki brought out the gift of tongues out of me at Women's Encounter. I mean, everybody has played a part. We all were there that year with the year of joy. We were laughing. We were crying. Then we were laughing again. We didn't understand. It was like I'm telling you about 50 women slain in the spirit, but just laughing, 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 laughing. Then Stacey, you forgot. We ended up dancing. We were dancing and doing some crazy stuff who couldn't dance started to dance but we were dancing we were celebrating we were praising i mean so encountering god doesn't always it, 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 it so mean that you're always crying crying is a sense of sometimes you're travailing you know you might be travailing on behalf of the country you might be travailing on behalf of the situation but also just raising hallelujah that year of joy was as if we were just raising him we were thanking him in advance you know because everything is going to be exceeding you know abundant about all things and, 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 and i experienced god at a completely different level i was like oh so it's not about gentle jesus hmm? it's another it's another dimension it's another level you know as I said, more we, another level where we allow Him to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts to break those bondages and shackles. I mean, yes, we go to church, but church is limited. And, and, and may I just say that we are the church. The place Amen. of worship is our temple. So let's just get that out there. My church is in my home, my bedroom, even during COVID. So just let's mash up that lie. We are the church. And Women's Encounter taught us that the relationship you have with God, it's a personal relationship. You walk and talk to him. You pick up the phone and you talk to the girlfriend all this time. But in your shower, you turn the tap on and allow the, the, that water to run. And God's presence is there. You drive your car to work. You turn. You no longer listen to all the boom, 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 boom. But you're listening to some good gospel music. You're listening to something that's soothing to your soul. And so this encounter, 
I was soothing to my soul. It created a space for deliverance. It created a space for unforgiveness. I remember Nikki one year we had to write all the things. I think we had to write all the things that we wanted to get rid of. So let us people who were on abuse. You used to drink rum, you smoke, you you whatever. You were whatever it was, you 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 know, whatever your struggle was, you know. Um whatever, whatever is that you you are sick of you it's in your closet that dark place you want nobody to know about you know that thing or those things and we had to make a list of it literally and let me tell you something the first thing on my list was unforgiveness of my mother i couldn't believe it that was when it became clear as day i had a problem i didn't know what the problem was all my life I thought other people was a problem wow but Holy Spirit showed up and the first thing, let me tell you something, God don't need to come right now to tell you what your problems are and all the things that you're bad. If you were to make a list A and list B, the bad and the good, trust me, your pen and your paper, you're going to write them down because you, we know what they are and we also can see the progress. And because of women's encounter, I was able to face my demons head on. They were listed in front of me. And at the end of that encounter, let me tell you something. The transformation that took place in not just a mental, but in my body, in my soul, in my heart. I felt so light. I thought I could just take on the whole world. I was chatting, chatting, chatting at the end. I mean, I think Stacey, I gave you a drive home. And I chat Stacey the whole time to her. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry, Stacey. I chat her out the whole time. But I was on a high I was filled with joy because after we wrote that list of the demons and we pushed the serpent's head and we went and we burned, burned it. Burned, burned it. It's a sacrifice. We burned it. We made a bold statement that look here, man, we shall live and not die. We shall yeah, live and not die. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And we made that and we made that declaration. We decreed and we cleared it and so that's that symbolized change it symbolized transformation it seems symbolized the renewal of the mind the spirit the heart and i'm telling you women i encourage you our sunday service is great it serves its purpose and keeps us rooted and grounded. but when we go deep and really i know the holy spirit but then again my church you know holy spirit show up every sunday and my church is trumpet call ministries there is not a sunday that holy spirit don't show up that there is a great harvest of so amen and transformation so let me tell you not because we look this way on this call our church just like jesus christ says come as you are in your pants, in your shorts, in your jeans, with your raster head, whatever it is, because we know the God we serve and we Amen. allow him to make a change in you as long as you allow him. So so women's encounter it's a life changing, transforming experience. Don't miss it. Amen. Yvette, can you pick up, please? Tell the, the audience some more about this upcoming women's encounter, what they can expect and how they can register. I feel right now like a little girl getting ready to go into a candy <laughs> store. And I, I don't know what's in there this year, but there is another side that I have never been to. And I'm so excited. <laughs> To go in, guys. Every year we see a different side of God, and yes. it is. I mean, it is so exciting. I, I, I feel like to keep the enemy in his seat. I, I can't wait. You know, yes. and Nikki, if if Nikki could just put up that 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 flyer, that flyer is so significant. What can you expect, guys? If you see that that woman. It's, she represents a woman with the glory of God shining down on her. If you see on the back there, there are some arrows, right? And every year, women go to the encounter to be equipped. I normally say it's fallen soldiers, go in, clean off the wound, get up back, get the M16, get the Uzi, 
Get the Glock and automatic, and we go back to keep the devil in his seat. Right? Amen. And so I want you to bring your expectation. I want you to bring your hunger. I mean, if there is anything in your life that you need to lose the appetite for, I'm telling you, just come tired of yourself. That is all you need. Just get tired of yourself. I just want to share a little with you guys uh, my journey for, for um, Women's Encounter. Today, my daughter is celebrating. In 12 years of marriage and I know that some of, of, of you online right now you did know that I have a daughter with married but I struggled with sexual sin even when I was saved and in the church right and so I had issues from my teenage years. From you here that 12 year old, 12, she married for 12 years now, you know that, you know, you know a history. There are cycles in our lives sometimes that need to be broken. I'm gonna encourage you. If you have a cycle that you need to be broken, if you have an appetite that you need to lose, I am telling you just come, get signed up, Come, you're gonna be equipped. You're gonna be challenged. You're gonna be, I mean, we're gonna have breakout sessions, guys, that, I mean, it's gonna be your little like private corner. You're gonna get the spiritual profiles and you're gonna deal with business. It's gonna be business that you deal with. And so I remember my first encounter. I was tired of myself. I came from another church. And I was living with one foot in and one foot out as a leader in that other church. I knew how to play church. And I was tired of playing church, but I didn't know how to deal with that stronghold. And so at the encounter, it's called encounter. You encounter God. You encounter the Father, you encounter the Holy Spirit, you encounter yourself, and you all you need is to just get tired of yourself, just get tired of what is working in your life, bring your expectation of getting tired of yourself, and you will be transformed and you will be delivered. So just like this woman um in 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 in, in, the, in the picture here where you see she have her arrows there she have she has been equipped this is a finished product this is the glory of god shining down upon her amen and this is where her arrows are so when she gets up back when we get up back in god we are a force be reckoned with. So I'm just gonna encourage you. We have um on um Nikki, uh, persons online can sign up. Um, so Nikki, Nikki, you can give us some information more specifically yeah. about the dates and what some of the sessions and how they can sign up on yeah. the what, Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it's going to start Thursday evening. This Thursday, um, August the twentieth at 6 30. we would love it if you could log on at 6 p.m it's on facebook you can um lo uh, fill out a google form there to say you want to uh, uh attend and um fill it in because we would love to know your name and your phone number and where you're located so we'll have a google form on facebook now our facebook is trumpet call ministries international so go to our facebook page we would love you to come on on thursday at six our sessions really don't start till 6 30 but this is just so we can take registration so our session will start at 6 30 on thursday the 20 um what did i say 20th the 20th sorry the 20th, the 20th. right and then we will continue on friday at 6 30 p.m yeah again and then on saturday from 10 a.m to 2 p.m 
No, we will be teaching. We, we will go through teachings. We'll go through small groups. We will have a fresh revelation of the cross. We'll have a fresh revelation of the Father's heart towards you. You'll encounter God face to face. And you will see that you are made in the image of God. And that he wants you to carry his image everywhere you go. And we'll end up with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So those of you who have never spoken with tongues or have never received the gift of tongues, be hungry for it because that is the end result, that you become a flaming fireball for Jesus. Amen. Wow, wow. So, um, and I guess you could also call the church, 971-876-971-1773. We're not open tomorrow, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And, and just say, I want to sign up for Women's Encounter. We do have Men's Encounter, Children's Encounter that just took place and was highly successful. The fire of God fell over our children. And we also have Youth Encounters. So if you are a youth or a male and want to be part of an encounter, let us know because yours is coming up soon too. Amen. 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 Thank you for that information, Nikki. Ladies, what a powerful time of sharing. Oh, we just want to welcome our Facebook audience and mention some of the comments. If you have any questions that you want to throw at us, please type them in now and our panelists will be happy to answer as best they can. So we have here Marlene Hall saying, good evening, ladies. We have Kim Bradford. Good evening, Kim. Kristen Knowles greeting us, Cynthia Joseph Peter, a faithful follower, as well as Mandela Rosalie Peters, my sister. We have Esther Davis again greeting, and Auntie Claire from the USA. We have Lamar Burroughs. We have Marlene Hall, Lenny Williams saying blessings from Jamaica. We have Elsie Frederick from St. Vincent saying good evening. We have Irene Isaacs Laidlow. We have Dick Delion saying good evening, ladies. One love. We have Sharon Renee saying greetings from the Bahamas. We have Yvonne Adderley saying good afternoon from the Bahamas. We have who else again? And we have Yvonne saying, you need to associate yourself with people who have positive impact on your life. She was agreeing with a comment that was made earlier. We have, um, wow, we have Irene. Thank you for inviting your friend, Michelle, saying, come here. It's so nice. <laughs> we have Kim Bradford saying that, yes, we were made on purpose, for purpose. L Lanny Williams saying, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord God. Amen. Kim is saying support is key. And you know, she's just saying hallelujah. We have Valkyria who joined us. Valkyria was another one of our leaders. Lovely, lovely fireball for Christ from the Dominican Republic. And we've now adopted her here in Jamaica. Greetings, big up Walky. <laughs> love you, love you, love you. We have Danita Adelie Henry saying hi, my friend Beth. God is awesome. We have Farah Friday who joined us. We have Africa saying, Amen. We have Joanna Comabash saying, But God indeed. And Kerry, she's been multitasking, both joining the conversation and putting in some comments saying that God is good, His goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. Cynthia, Cynthia, thank you so much for joining. Cynthia Joseph Peter here in Jamaica saying she looks forward to this program on Sundays. And thank you, ladies, women of God. We have Cheryl Cartwright saying amen. Mandela saying, praise God, what a mighty God we serve. Nikki also commented, multitasking to God be the glory. We have Nadine Lowe saying hello from the Bahamas. So proud of you, Beth. Continue to walk in your destiny. Oh, my goodness. We have Kim, amen and amen. We have Paula Buff. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, saying quite an enlightening meeting. Ladies, blessings, Beth. And Kim is saying, amen. Thank you, thank you so much. Let me tell you something, Beth. I hope you will forgive me for this one. 
But just to tell you how real we are with each other, I remember an evening after one of our building team. So I get to lead this phenomenal group of leaders who are leaders in their own right. So it's like, you know, it's all equal at the foot of the cross. And we used to have monthly meetings to plan our ministry, to plan how things are going to go. And we upline things, you know, to Yvette, who would upline to Apostle and the executive leadership team. And then we would see things being executed, right? So one evening, I remember Beth and Stacey and I were just chatting. It was soon time for her to go back to the Bahamas. And we were having some girl talk. And we were speaking into each other's lives. And, you know, Beth was sharing some of the challenges she had gone through. And, you know, I said, Beth, I, I can see that you have some walls up and you need to take those walls down because you may feel that these walls, are, let's get real women. Sometimes with all the things, the hurts that we go through, yeah. we, we go in our little corner, we have our pity party and we build up those walls and nobody better dare not come over that wall. But let me tell you something, you're barricading yourself, right? We have to learn to release and forgive. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean the person didn't do you wrong or they don't even have to deserve it. But just as God forgives us, we're called to forgive. So I was speaking mm -hmm. into Beth and I said, Beth, I see those walls. You have to take those walls down, girl. I say, girl, you're gonna get married you, again. This is going to happen. That is going to happen. I didn't realize things would happen so quickly. But let me tell you, within months of Beth going back, I hear about engagement. I say, Lord, wow, that was fast. No, no, boy. And, and you know, it's just the support and the sharing and the realness yes. and her testimony. Because remember I told you, she spread out herself and she was vulnerable in that first meeting. And she said, ladies, I am least among you. It's only years after being in meeting after meeting with Beth, you know, fellowship after fellowship, I realized Beth is, was well a minister in the Bahamas. I'm like, seriously, woman? <laughs> you more qualified than me. <laughs> you know, but fast forward to now, she's walking in her purpose. She has, you know, she's remarried to an awesome man of God who has been promoting this program. Thank you, Calvin, for the support. And so I just want to thank you, ladies. We can, I knew, knew this would be our longest program because, so apologies, audience, but when we get together, it we can end. go on and, and on, on and, and on. And Doc, <laughs> so, uh, um, Doc I just wanted to... Ask, go no, ahead. No, go I just ahead. wanted to say, um, speaking about um, Beth and her growth, um, Beth, with your permission, um, I just want to, you know, give the audience an idea as to what happens sometimes in our meetings because one of the things that had happened um, with Beth was that um, we were in that, that last group she was a part of was, was our group and one of the things that had happened in our group was we would pray for each other in circles and I remember Faye Rodriguez was a part of our group and one of the pronouncements that she had made one evening when we were meeting was that Beth, your land shall be married. I don't know if Beth remembers that. And you had to translate because I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> exactly. Because, you know, and, and it also shows the importance of speaking into each other's lives and speaking positivity into each other's lives. So if we are all believing and we all have faith because our kingdom is based on faith, and when she had her sisters praying and this 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 pronouncement that was made and this prayer that was made over her life because as doc said she will be the first to say oh i'm the least among you you know this will not happen and we you know we we kept saying best uh, another thing that she had an issue with best with your permission <laughs> voice and everybody she didn't want to speak publicly because she was very conscious about her voice and which is voice, lovely just the most beautiful voice we've heard so we encouraged her and we said Beth we want you to pray we want you to speak you have the most beautiful voice and we saw Beth blossom blossom wow. into this very confident woman and every single thing that was spoken over her life we are here as her sister supporting and believing her and believing what God has said about her and not the thoughts that the devil has put into her head because ladies sometimes 
as sisters, it is our jobs to stand in the gap and to stand up for our sisters and to strike down the words, negative words that have been spoken over each other that will take root. So that is also a part of our job. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, you know, it, it's all a part of speaking positivity, being on the same frequency with, with each other and supporting each other. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Stacey. You are so on point. <laughs> and we have another comment from Ashley, your daughter, Beth, saying powerful words. Proud of you, mommy. <laughs> um, my hobby joined. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for your support. We have Kim Bradford again saying, yes, Beth, we are so proud of you and your journey of faith. Wow, wow, wow. Ladies, Dr. we can Richard, go on and on. Dr. <laughs> go ahead, Beth. <laughs> If I may share just for, for, for two minutes, you know, as we've all shared on this call, we're living in a time where there's so much uncertainty and so much anxiety and so much difficulties. And so to the women who are watching now, and even to the women who I know will watch the replay, I say to you, I may not know the extent or the specifics of your difficulty. As you see with all the women on this call, we've all, we're very diverse. We've all had our own unique path, our own unique journey. Uh, so I may not know exactly what you're going through. Some of, some women who are watching Dr. Rusha, I feel may be facing, you know, obstacles and difficulties that may be seemingly insurmountable. They may be faced with some difficulties where They've been experiencing some deep and profound pain. Mm -hmm. For those of you who may not know, the women on this call is aware, but for those who may be watching and who will watch. Four months ago, when I got the news that my mother had went home to be with the Lord, I literally felt like my heart had left my body. Mm -hmm. And My grief was compounded by the flight restrictions associated with the pandemic that prevented me, two of my siblings, and five of my mother's grandchildren from attending the funeral in Nassau. So that's still very much an open wound as I sit before you today. Three months after that, my brother Mario, who I was very close to, also went home to be with the Lord. Suffice it to say, the last several months for me has been unprecedentedly trying. And as I press and I put in the work and commit to doing what is necessary for me to safely navigate through my profound grief, I am here today as a witness. Hallelujah. I am here today to testify with 100% certainty. I can tell you that God's capacity to sustain is still very much intact. Amen. Amen. Ladies, listen to me. If you didn't hear anything else, I would have said, listen to me, there is no degree of uncertainty, no pain, no need that we can have that has the ability to exceed the borders of God's grace. His grace is still sufficient. There is no need that we have. He can be trusted with our pain. He can be trusted with our fears. He can be trusted with our anxiety. So cry if you need to, scream if you have to, and just know that not one drop of your tears goes unnoticed before God. If you can't pray, groan. Whatever it is, God can handle it. God can handle it. Amen. So I just want to encourage somebody today, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. 
Ladies, I want to encourage somebody today, according to Ephesians 2.10, we are still God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So no matter what we encounter, no matter what we're faced with, don't let anything prevent us from doing what we were created to do. Let's be our sister's keepers. Let's do what God has called us to do. God can be trusted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Rusha. I love you. Oh, thank you, you Beth. Thank you, Beth. I just want to piggyback on that. Ladies, let me tell you, <laughs> among all of us, we have been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, right? And we can say with great certainty that the best decision that you can make is to give your life to God. Even if you did it and you backslidden, come back to him. Yes. God loves us. Nothing can separate us from his love. It doesn't make sense doing life without him. Um, we live in a world where there's so much turmoil. There is so much uncertainty. But yet, we can have faith in him to carry us through. With all due respect, in our quest to be politically correct, sometimes we stifle our voice as the body of Christ. And I'm not talking about church as a denomination or whatever. I'm talking the kingdom, the body of Christ, of which we are all a part. We cannot be ashamed to proclaim Jesus Christ. Those of you who may be even in other religions, you may be an atheist, you may have been knocked by the church, you may have, been, uh, you may have experienced abuse in the church, remember, you are not called to follow the pastor. You're called to follow Christ. Okay? And we can see based on what's going on in the world, there is no doubt that God is real, that the Bible is the spoken, is the, every word is inspired by God. Because we see, if we need it, we have an instruction manual for life, you know, it's in the Bible. They have been there, done that in the Bible. You can have an answer for every situation. You see prophecy being fulfilled before our very eyes, written thousands of years ago. You don't tell me that all this that is happening in the world is just happening. So let's not get caught up in distractions. Our time is short, and this is not to spook you out, right? But whatever time you have left, I implore you, give your life to God. Support others, even those in the church. We need to do better at showing love. We have to, others have to see Christ in us. We cannot be our, we cannot be there in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, getting slain and being so anointed. And our tongue spews out hate against our brother and sister. Or you make some, some, some comments that pull others down. No, 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 no. Let's be about building each other up. Let's change the narrative. Women, we are stronger together. We are stronger in Christ. So ladies, I just want you to take these last few moments to just each give a word of, of empowerment and evangelism to the sisters. And Nikki, feel free. When we're done, if you feel the need to minister, you minister, you go right ahead. You say the prayer of salvation, whatever you feel led to do. Because we are transacting kingdom business. This is not about my show. This is about kingdom business. Okay? So, Yvette, you want to take it? I feel led in my spirit. There is someone. I, I'm, what I'm seeing is like there's a cycle. A wow. cycle that needs to be broken. I testify earlier of my journey. I have a 30-year-old daughter. And I have to be intentional in breaking that cycle of teenage pregnancy in my family. And what I'm hearing God saying to this person is that you are stronger than you think. And that cycle that needs to be broken in your family. It's going to be you. It's going to come through you. 
I have to stand not as a married woman, as a single woman and break the cycle of divorce in my family. And you, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what is that cycle, but God is speaking to you and God is saying that the cycle will be broken when you take that stand. That cycle will be broken when you say, God, this is it. That cycle will be broken when you begin to fight for the destiny of your family. And God said to tell you that you have the tool. You are equipped. You have been saying that I cannot. What God said to tell you today that you can. And even right now in your spirit, man, you're being, you're being strengthened. Even right now in your spirit, man, God is giving you the word. There's the, the situation that needs to be attacked. God is empowering you right now. God is giving you the bonus right now to take on that situation. So God is saying, go for it. And so you can deal with that situation even before women's encounter. God said, even before women's encounter, you are going to be breaking curses. You're yes. going to break that general, that thing in your family that you say, God, every day you get up and you say, God, this needs to be broken. So I, I just gonna, I just want to be obedient, Dr. Rusha, and you know, just release that, 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 that into. Thank, thank you so much for releasing that word and and if you know you're that person feel free to comment afterwards i'll put up the numbers to um of tcmi that you can call and speak to somebody if you need to speak to somebody we also have counseling services prayers of salvation you know whatever your need is i'll put that up after stacy any final words to empower and evangelize to women thank you yvette and thanks for all you do you're welcome, Dr. A. Thanks for building into me <laughs> and us. <laughs> um, my final words um, for this afternoon to the ladies who may be listening is that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and of a sound mind. And I want you to be intentional about acknowledging the fact that you have a heavenly father who has fashioned you in his image and who has put you in the palm of his hands. You were created for such a time as this. I want you to understand that no matter where you have been, no matter what you have been through, you are not your past. Your past, informs you it informs who you've become but your past is not who you are your best is yet to come your future is written in the book of life you have been written what god has said about you is what you are to believe you are the head and not the tail you're above and not beneath and i want you to understand you are, an, you are not your issues. Do not be defined by your issues. You are daughters of a living God. Now, you have heard our testimonies this afternoon. You have heard each of us be very real about our journey, about where we were taken from, where we've come, and where we intend to go. And I want you to understand that all of what you see here is not just available to a chosen few, but it is available to you. You are able to be a part of this kind of love and acceptance. The kingdom of God is there for all of us. And one of the things that I would really want you to take away from this afternoon is that the stereotypes that exist are not real. Do not believe the lies. Do not believe that women can't empower women. Do not believe that if you were not brought up with a particular family structure, that your future is, 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 is already defined. Your future is not defined by who you were. 
God can turn any situation into his most, you know, there's a saying that says, your test is your testimony. Our greatest strengths are in our testimonies. So if there's nothing else you take away from this afternoon, is you really ought to take away the fact that one, we're all even at the foot of the cross and that he is there for us all. We are all women from different backgrounds, from different walks of life, who were brought together in, 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 in times that were uncertain, not knowing what we were gonna get into. But I can tell you that Beth, having been a part of our group, no matter where in the world she goes, she's always our sister. I am now in the United States and I can tell you that if something goes wrong with me, my sisters are going to know. I can tell you that if I go missing, there are women who are gonna hunt me down, they are gonna find me, and they're gonna empower me. And they're not just doing it for me, they're doing it because they know what I carry. We want to know what you carry. We believe that you carry something that is precious and potent for the kingdom of God. We want you to join us on this journey. We want, we want you to, to come to life. We want you to, to reach that potential. We want you to find that purpose, that God-given purpose that is inside of you. We want your purpose to connect with your path. We don't want you to be going on that path to destruction anymore. We want you to find that purpose that you were created for so that you can come into the kingdom to perform the works that you were created to do. We are all in this together, ladies. We're all on this journey together and we need you to walk, run in your lane because it is going to get worse. The, the, the problems that have started with COVID and all the other things that are coming, this is not the end, it is the beginning. You saw that poster. We need to kneel down. We need to get to that place at the foot of the cross where we can be cleansed, empowered, and fortified so that when we raise up and we stand up, we are ready for battle. This is where it, it is happening. You need to come into this kingdom so that you can be equipped to fight the battle because the war is not against flesh and blood. The battles are not physical. It's against principalities and powers in heavenly places. One of the things that we have learned as sisters and Arusha can tell you is that we have learned to war in the spirit. Amen. When each of us needs each other, we don't we don't get we don't necessarily get a phone call. Tahoya will get a spiritual something will rise up in Tahoya's spirit and she will say, Kerry, something is wrong with Stacy. She will say, Doc needs us. It doesn't just happen overnight, ladies. It means that we have met at the foot of that cross. We have, we have met and we've communed and we've spent time with each other. And then we are connected through that frequency, that spiritual frequency. You heard, ladies and gentlemen, about us being trained in the beginning. Training is necessary. You heard about, you know, the way that our program has started. You heard also that Nikki, you know, in the beginning, we needed that loving, wonderful, awesome, nurturing that comes with that motherly love and sweetness that Nikki used to give. There has now been a transition. Yvette is now our leader. And it doesn't mean that Yvette is no longer is, is not loving and, and, and wonderful and awesome. But it's not about that nurturing, spoon feeding, milk, breast milk kind of thing. We are now activated as soldiers. So Yvette's leadership style is a little different because the demands that we're about to face are now different. So now under Yvette's leadership, we have been mobilized to be soldiers. It is no longer lovey-dovey sweetness or oh, awesome. No, no, it is militancy, tearing it down in the realm of the spirit, fighting it before it even begins. Because that is what kingdom is. Without growth, we can't change and be better. So this afternoon, ladies, it's just, it, it, even though it's been a few hours, you won't even understand. We could be here all night. We could be here till tomorrow and still be testifying and worshiping. 
but we just wanted you to have a taste of us. I mean, right now, we've, we've not been able to meet in the, you know, in the physical as we would normally do because of COVID. But I can tell you that now, instead of meeting every other week, we meet three times a week online. And it is even more potent. We can tell you that there are some nights on a Saturday night, who would have thought on a Saturday night, my Saturday night would start at eight, nine o'clock and on midnight sometimes. I'd be on the phone with my sisters just worshiping. Nobody wants to leave. And it's not superficial. Tahoya can tell you, sometimes we're on our meetings and her little daughters join in. They have questions for their aunties. They want to know, we teach the young ones, what does it mean to forgive? How do you love your sibling? This is what community and family is about. So we're just inviting you to be a part of the community of Christ. So I just wanted to share that with you this afternoon. It's Thank, just you. So Thank you so much. And Stacey, I see your growth too. Thank you for your support. You know, you, you have my back. Um, I see your testimony. You know, you mentioned getting pregnant in your teenage years and she didn't mention her accomplishments as lawyer, head of bar and all these things, <laughs> apart from her ministry, you know? And so I just want to thank you for your leadership in our ministry as well and for the person that you are. And for somebody who has started saying they don't know how to pray, um, I think we've gone way past that now, right? <laughs> we see the growth right before our eyes, and it's just so awesome. Um, Tahoya, can you just quickly say some empowering words and words of evangelism to the, the, the ladies listening? Of course. Um, John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so for those who are listening, I encourage every single person that is listening to have a relationship with your Lord and Savior. If you have one already, continue to be intentional. Continue to read the words of God. Um, stay close to the body of Christ. Stay plugged into the body of Christ at all times. It is essential that for you to remain saved that you continuously pray worship and read the word of god secondly it's important that you honor your brothers and sisters as my sisters previously said we are a community we are part of the body of christ we are a family and we cannot sing, praise, worship, and do all these things. And then when you go out into the world, you are stabbing your sister and brother in their back. You are, you are being jealous. You are being covetous. It's, that's not how the kingdom of God works. And so in our church, at TCMA, in the Women of Influence, we support each other. We uplift each other. We love each other. We bring joy and love and peace into each other's lives. So it's important that when you decide to walk with God, when you decide to, um, to become a part of the body of Christ, that you are intentional in everything that you do and you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your decision, to lead you in your, in, in your lifestyle. Because it's, it's not a part-time thing. It's a full-time ministry. It is a full-time lifestyle, okay? And it is important that you encourage those around you in your, in your immediate family, in your workplace. And you have to live what you preach. You have to exercise your belief and your faith daily. And so sisters and brothers, wherever you are today, I say pray, worship, and read your Bible. Build your relationship. Be consistent. Be intentional. Okay? Thank you so much, Arusha. Amen. Thank you so much, Tahoya. You are a powerhouse, and I have seen the growth in you too, and it is awesome. <laughs> and there's a preacher in you, girl. <laughs> Thank you. From somebody who overcame fear. <laughs> you know, um, God is good.
Kerry, can you just um, say a few words of empowerment and evangelism to our audience? Okay. Ladies, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Ladies, God is a God who forgives all your iniquities, a God who heals all your diseases. I feel led, Dr. Arusha, with your permission to declare and decree that healing is the children's bread. Amen. Cancer, high blood pressure, lupus, COVID, loose your daughter's of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Ladies, you are healed from unforgiveness, from oppression, depression, anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus. You are set free and loosed from every shackle and bondage by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, you will live and not die I am a testimony. You will live no thoughts of suicide. You will live, says Amen. the Lord. Amen. Allow Jesus Christ of Nazareth to have his way in Amen. your life. Jesus Amen. saves, ladies. Jesus saves. Amen. Ladies, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy and Thank you, Jesus. As your Jesus. Christ and Savior, and allow Him to fight in you. God is with you and will never leave you or Not forsake you. Thank you. you. God loves you. Give your life to Him. Show love and compassion in all your walk. Yes. Given you, give your life to Him with you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. So before um, Nikki wraps up now, we'll just take a few more comments um, that came in. We see Sharon Abrahams joined us, and she is also a woman of influence, member, powerful, powerful minister of the gospel. Welcome, Sharon. We have another comment from your daughter, Beth Ashley. Speaking positivity and life into each other is important always. Amen. We have um, Kim Bradford agreeing that the best decision you can make is to accept the, you know, Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We have Ava Daniel saying, speak it. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us on another program. Nikki is going to minister to us shortly. I just want to remind you that we have our upcoming women's encounter, TCMI, this Thursday, 6.30, Friday, 6.30, and Saturday, 10 to 2, on Zoom. So you have no excuse. This is your time, ladies. This is your time to meet your Savior. This is your time to get that solid rock, your foundation. Join with us, sisters. It is a safe place. You will not leave the same. So you can go on the Facebook page of Trumpet Call Ministries International, and you would see that flyer. The theme is Arise, Woman of Valor. Okay? And you can click, you can register the spaces may be limited so you want to register pre-register as soon as possible so we can get you that zoom link okay and if you two are interested in becoming a part as a woman all you have to be is a woman and you know in need of god if you want to join our woman of influence ministry you can message on trumpet call ministries international facebook page we can i'll put up the numbers again to call you can message on the dr arusha page so we just want to serve you and to see you maintain you and, and get your full potential of what god has in store for you so nikki you can just close us in prayer please 
and yes. minister as you see fit to God be the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, thank you, God, for what you have done through these mighty women that you have fashioned in your image and in your likeness. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those that are online, that have listened and are listening. Father, thank you, Lord God, that it is your intention that each and every one of us carry the image of your dear son, Jesus. And Romans 10, verse uh, 10 to 11 say, for it, with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's a simple thing to give your heart to Jesus. Just believe in your heart that Jesus came, that he died on the cross for you, that he shed his blood for you, that he became sickness, that he became sin, he became bitterness, he became shame for you. He stood in the place. He stood in the gap so that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you no longer have to walk with your head held down. You can walk with your head held high, knowing whose you are and who you belong to. So Father God, I thank you right now that everyone at the sound of my voice, something is shifting and transacting in the realm of the spirit, Lord God, that they're bowing their knees to the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus Christ, and you're stirring in them, in their hearts, Lord God, a desire to be discipled, to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ, that where they've been backslidden, Lord God, they'll no longer be backslidden, but Father, they'll come into a revelation of your great love. Father, your perfect love that casts out all fear, every fear of man, we say you have no place. Fear of the future, we say you have no place. Father, thank you right now, Lord God, that you are releasing unto them, Lord God. God, the desire. You said, Lord God, if we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, that everything else is taken care of. So, Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that people are seeking you, seeking you. And you said that when we seek you with all our hearts, we will find you. So, Father, I thank you right now that those at the sound of my voice, Lord God, that transactions are taking place, Lord God, that knees are bowing, that hearts are being transformed for your glory, Lord God. And Father, I thank you they'll never be the same again. Even this um, flat platform, Lord God, that you're doing something. And Father, where they're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, you are filling them. You are filling them to overflowing. Father, connect them. Connect them with the fire, with the fire, with other women, Lord God, that can build them up, that can build them up in the things of God. Lord God, I thank you right now for this platform, Lord God. We bless everyone. Father, we speak the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to everyone that has tuned in, that has come on board. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that something is stirring in them to arise and shine like never before. For the light of your glory is coming upon them. And Lord God, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God for this, um, this community, this safe community that you have fashioned, that you have done. Father, it is well, it is well, it is well. And Lord God, you're taking us from faith to faith, strength to strength, and glory to glory. Thank you, Lord God, that iron has sharpened iron this afternoon. Amen. And Father, something new is happening. And we are just uh, expectant and excited Hallelujah. for what Amen. you're doing next. Amen. We are Amen. expectant Amen. and excited Amen. for what you're doing next. And send them, Lord God. Those yes. that you want to come to the women's encounter, send them. Let them sign yes. up. Let them have yes. an expectancy and yes. an excitement yes. that they know they have to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And Father, Amen. we never disappoint. Amen. Jesus. You never disappoint. You are exceeding a greatly more abundantly than when we could ever ask, dream, think, or imagine. Amen. You are giving unto us. And Amen. Lord, we make ourselves Hallelujah. available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Hallelujah. Jesus is name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, so much. Thank you Jesus. Woo. Thank you so much, ladies. And ladies, we are, as I said, I'm going to put up the numbers for TCMI from Tuesday to, uh, what is it, Friday. You can call. Somebody is there to talk to you. And we're going to put up the flyer as well for the women's encounter. We can't wait to see you there. Thank you, my sisters. I love you, my phenomenal mm. sisters. Thank you for Thank taking you. time out of your schedules to be with us. We thank our senior pastor, Apostle Mary Wilish. 
we thank all the women of influence members all you know the entire church body and the greater kingdom of god we thank you that's for it, your support it. yeah because united mm -hmm. we stand in him so mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen we're coming to the end of another arise and blossom with dr rusha show our next show will be on August 30th. So remember, we do this every other Sunday at 4 p.m. Jamaica time. And we're going to be looking at back to school, the new normal. You don't want to miss that pertinent show, okay? So thank you. I know this program has been extended, but we know that God is in control. And I know that hearts have been touched. Lives will be transformed salvations will transact in the name of jesus name of commitment jesus. and we thank god for it and we are examples that empowered women can empower other women so we Amen. give all god all thanks and all praise in the most precious name of jesus Amen. bye thank you for joining us Amen. And until Amen. next time keep blossoming <laughs> Bye, Beth. Bye, Bye Stacey. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.